Come in. Are we ready, sir? I guess so. Take care of this. It's Canada's cup. Yes, sir, monsieur. Merci. Even the prime minister paid his respects to the Grey Cup. Back in the capital for the 40th reunion of the last Ottawa team to win it. Like this. Gabriel is open in the end zone. Touchdown! The Rough Riders got Canada's Cup that day from the first Prime Minister Trudeau. The Grey Cup. The Prime Minister of Canada, the Premier Minister of Canada, Monsieur Pierre Elliott Trudeau. This past summer, the 1976 Riders gathered in Ottawa, four decades after that dramatic game. About two dozen teammates returned to Lansdowne Park, but others from that championship season were missing in action. It's the CFL's occupational hazard, say players and their families, brain disorders like Alzheimer's, ALS, Parkinson's, and chronic traumatic encephalopathy called CTE, conditions that can be linked to concussions playing football, a toll felt in Ottawa and all around the CFL. Before we go any farther, I should tell you, this is one of the most difficult fifth estate stories I've ever had to tell, because I'm part of it. For five years here at Lansdowne Park, I played for the Ottawa Rough Riders. So I'm a member of that generation of Canadian Football League players now in the shadow of the condition called CTE, which links blows to the head, which we all got plenty of in the CFL, and dementia in later life. So in a way, this is my story too. The center is number 42, Bob McEwen. In the Canadian Football League, there are head-to-head -head collisions on virtually every play. Casada takes the snap from his Yale center, Bob McEwen. We were coached to hit with our helmets, equivalent to dozens of head-on car crashes each game. I played for five years. Do the math. Let's go! Let's go! During my playing career, I had several concussions, but none more profound than the one that took place right here at Lansdowne Park. We were in the Eastern Final against the Hamilton Tiger Cats. Winner goes to the Grey Cup. I was the Ottawa center, facing off against the middle linebacker for Hamilton, Mark Cosmos. Quite simply, all afternoon, Cos beat me up using his forearm against my face. I threw up all night. I had a blinding headache for a week. But I never told the trainers or the team doctor. It was an invisible injury. I was the only one who knew I had it. So I kept it to myself. And I was far from alone. These are the Ottawa Rough Riders who won the 1973 Grey Cup. I'm number 42 there in the top row. Over the years, a number of my Ottawa teammates have struggled with dementia, a dozen, maybe more. I won't mention all of them, but I will tell you about a couple. First, my longtime friend Jerry Campbell, number 54, soupy to everyone. We sat next to each other in the Rough Rider locker room. I was then in my early 20s. A worthy inductee to the Canadian Football Hall of Fame. Soupy already on his way to the Hall of Fame. This is a cat's ass, isn't it? After football, we stayed close, and I began to realize my pal was forgetting important things, his short-term memory getting ever shorter. Hey, bro! I haven't seen you for a while. It's been a couple of months. Yeah. You're looking good. But we've always managed to find ways to talk and laugh, especially about the good old days. Here's a story on you, and it says, Jerry Campbell, Linebacker and social director. Social director. Which is true. You were the but social convener of the Rough Riders, well, as I recall. That's right. We used to find the broads, didn't we? <laughs> well, yeah. The beer. I was going to yeah, say the beer. The beer all over. But much of Soupy Campbell's storied past has been stolen from him by dementia. You were all Canadian well, middle linebackers seven years in a row. Was I? Was you I were? That, seven. Yeah, good. Neat. Not, that's from our last oh, reunion, right? The 40th reunion of that 73 yeah. team. Okay, uh, I recognize the faces. I yeah, can't yeah. remember the name. Jimmy. Today, the best part of Soupy's life is his wife, Kim, who retired a few years ago to take care of him 24-7 so he can remain at home. Yeah. <laughs> Kim says some days are better than others. Occasionally now, he forgets who she is. 
Should that happen, there's a reminder in the kitchen. When we visited, Kim thought Soupy should handle the conversation on his own, which he mostly did, though she was nearby to help. How old am I, Kim? 72. 72, so I'm not too bad being 72, and I'm glad I'm still here. Soupy was in his 60s when diagnosed with Alzheimer's, age-appropriate perhaps, though studies show former pro football players are three times more likely to die from it and other degenerative brain diseases. As for the disorder known as CTE, that can only be identified in post-mortem analysis. So former pro athletes are recruited to donate their brains when they die. Recent American figures show that of the 94 brains from football players studied so far, 90 had evidence of CTE, an astonishing rate of 96%. Here in Canada, researchers have found CTE in about a third of the brains of former athletes. Still a disturbing statistic. And many of those players shared common problems in life, erratic behavior depression, business, or personal failure. In a nutshell, that's the story of another of my Ottawa teammates, all-Canadian defensive back Rod Woodward. I just praise God that uh, I had an opportunity to play today. Rod died in BC this past September after his own long battle with dementia. When I first knew him, he was a young family man with a budding career as a financial advisor and university football coach. But by his 40s, those close to him saw changes, like memory loss. For friend and teammate Jerry Oregon, it was hearing the same things over and over. The typical repetitive question, repetitive story, repetitive everything. And I'm thinking, wow, um, what's going on here? I said, Rod, you already told me that. Oh yeah, okay, sorry. Um, you know, the early small indicators and eventually, there was the turmoil that afflicts the lives of many brain-injured players. Convicted of misusing his clients' money, Rod's family believes that, too, was because of what football did to his brain. I saw this mysterious disease take Rod's capacity one day, one month, one year at a time. And I felt for Rod, and there was nothing that, that we could do. Rod Woodward's name is now among the former CFLers on a $200 million lawsuit alleging the Canadian Football League withheld crucial information about the dangers of football. The CFL argues it's an employment dispute that doesn't belong in court. By contrast, the National Football League in the U.S. finally has admitted a link between blows to the head in football and brain disease. The NFL has reached a settlement with thousands of former players for about a billion dollars. The CFL says it's doing its best to protect the safety of players today. But for those of us who played when we did, there's little support from the league. No disability. No long-term care. We wanted to ask CFL Commissioner Jeffrey Orridge about that but he refused our request for an interview, citing the pending litigation. Which brings us back to my teammate, Soupy Campbell. When asked if the CFL should at least try to learn about the health problems of its former players, like him, Soupy answered this way. Exactly, just to, to, to help the bad guys that are in trouble, yeah. to help, help their life. Pulled down from behind by Jerry Campbell inside the 30. For all of us, it seems a long time ago. But for those former players in trouble, as my pal Soupy puts it, the impact of the CFL on their lives is not only in the past, but also in the present and future. As I recall it now, whenever I had a concussion, I would feel as if I were floating above the field, watching myself play down there. And everything unfolded in slow motion. So I had the impression that I could anticipate things. I actually convinced myself I played better when I was concussed. So did I have numerous concussions playing football? Absolutely. Do I feel the impact of those today? Happily, not yet. Am I concerned about the future, given what's happened to many of my friends? How could I not be? But it's, it's sobering when you've done the same things to your head they did to theirs, to see that progression. So you look at yourself and think, 
Hmm. Am I in uh, trouble? Is something going on in there? <laughs> That's why I visited Dr. Lily Naz Hazradi of the Canadian Concussion Center, who analyzes the brains of former pro football players. I agreed to donate mine, as long as I can keep using it a little longer. All right, I'm ready to sign up, provided okay. <laughs> it's understood that delivery is to be determined. Okay. Great. Well, I am... Thank you very, very much. Very happy about That's that. Fantastic. I, I won't be around to know the results, unfortunately, but someone will. Will you contribute to the uh, to the science, to the yeah. research? So it seems to me that if I want the Canadian Football League to do the right thing and address the brain health problems of a generation of CFL players, which is exactly what I'm asking, giving my brain is the least I can do. Now, CFL, over to you. <laughs>